we are great in this kingdom by having a supernatural advantage what is your own advantage for believer our advantage is the spiritual if you don't have your own covenant with God I assure you you can't finish the race without this covenant of God without this altar the living altar of God man will waste time here on earth the realm of the spirit have no regard to what you are physically you can be a teacher physically are you a teacher spiritually you can be a businessman on the outside but are you a businessman on the inside the question now is who are you on the inside not who you are on the outside what covenant are you operating from many of you have not subscribed to a covenant what altar are you connected to in other words there is a race ahead of you brothers and sisters if you want to be victorious the truth there is you must ask Paul how do you finish the race these men are men of covenants never fight a battle without a backup you become a victim yourself many of you today your problem started when you decided to fight the idol of your family and yet you don't have a backup If you work on the natural, Satan will cheat you. If you work on the natural, you have no advantage at all. I tell you the truth, I will never, never work on the natural alone. The Bible says, a body without a spirit is dead. There is no advantage for you at all in this world. No matter how simple and how nice you are how kind you are man of god i'm a simple man shame on you it's not by being simple to be great here we are great in this kingdom by having a supernatural advantage what is your own advantage for believer our advantage is the spiritual if you don't have a backup of the supernatural forget about how nice how calm how simple i want my life to be great i want to be a great man of god how do you want to do it i'm an innocent man i went to bible school i love the lord i have money to build a church shame on you that is not how to do church i want to be a great businessman man of god my uncle have been in that line so he introduced me to it let me tell you without the supernatural you have no advantage you have no advantage if you don't have your own covenant with God I assure you you can't finish the race without this covenant of God without this altar the living altar of God man will waste time here on earth and let me tell you the truth the realm of the spirit have no regard to what you are physically you can be a teacher physically are you a teacher spiritually you can be a businessman on the outside but are you a businessman on the inside the question now is who are you on the inside not who you are on the outside the realm of the spirit has no regard for what you do physically are you not aware that the bible says unless the lord build a house though the build that they are still wasting time laying blocks laying bricks and everything they said they are building in vain when they say the lord the lord means the spiritual the covenant behind it we can start by knowledge or we finish by covenant we start by what we start by what but we finish by what it takes knowledge to start but it takes covenant to finish no one finish the race by just knowledge Mm. I know Jesus I read my Bible I know the scripture is it not in your Bible the Bible says in Luke 10 verse 19 the Lord has given me power power to trample upon snakes and scorpions then you go and meet demon and say it is written in Luke 10 verse 19 demon look at you and laugh I know it is written too I hope you know Satan know it is written 
I hope you know demon know it is written too. You are not the only one that know it is written. It takes an altar to back you up. Businessman on the outside. Are you a businessman on the inside? Teachers, lecturers on the outside. Are you also a lecturer in the spirit? It is who you are in the spirit that reflects on the outside. If you are a weakling, a failure, a disadvantage, a crippled man in the spirit, you can be physically fit on the outside and sit and say you are cheap. You are cheap. Seven sons of Skivas thought it was just by mouth. He said, we command you demon in the name of Jesus. Sit and give them a good advice. He said, Jesus, we know. He said, Paul, we know these men are not standing on the ground to declare. That means to do business on the outside without having a covenant backup is a dangerous thing. That means to be a minister on the outside because you know the dynamics of ministry is a dangerous thing because one day Satan will ask you who are you? Now innocent men were doing ministries and Satan asked them Jesus we know them and their covenant I hope you know that Satan don't know you by your appearance Satan know you by your covenant what covenant are you operating from? what covenant are you operating from? many of you have not subscribed to a covenant I experienced a battle in the scripture and I want you to know about it this battle is a battle for lesson for generation yet unborn in the book of 1st Samuel chapter 17 and verse 45 it was David and Goliath Goliath raw a giant six feet tall with six toes and six fingers a row to innocent people and they were afraid when David saw him he said this man is only a giant on the outside but he has no altar that backs him up so many of us are also a big businessman on the outside like Goliath but there's no covenant on the inside we rely on the business strategy we say we have been trained I man of God I study accounting in school I study business administration in school congratulations you are like Goliath who is balanced on the outside but weak on the inside have you seen people who say I beat my chest I know this business will work and yet it does not work I know by the level of effort I have put in place man of God my ministry should be a big ministry by now it's not like that it is totally not like that Goliath was well balanced on the outside same as you some of us are well balanced on the outside you see my uncle is there he must help me even if my uncle does not help me my auntie will still help me even if my auntie did not help me my mother will help me even if my mother did not help me ah, my, my friends will help me and God said you are not wise it takes covenant to make progress in this kingdom not association strong covenant when Goliath met David he said look at you small boy is this the best you people can bring out to me? A little boy. The way I will kill this boy to be embarrassing before everyone. <laughs> David have understanding of one thing. He knows for sure. That it is the covenant that supervise the battle we face. David tell him. He said you come to me with sword javelins and all weapons he said but i come to you with a name do you go to battleground with a name do you want to die 
Have you ever seen in a battleground, rather than taking your sword, taking all your weapon, your shield, you went with the name? David said, I know for sure that that name is mysterious. Anyone who go with the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle, is already a finished battle on arrival. Before you start, we serve a God who finished the battles before the battle starts. Many of you, you ignore this process. You have fight for 15 years of your life and your life look like somebody that is just starting 15 days ago because everything you are doing is only on your outside. Power and minds. Say you come to me with a sword, but I come in a what? I come with a name. This is the strange battle I've ever witnessed in the Bible. A battle you go with a name. You that you are fighting battles, what are you fighting with? We fight with a name. In other words, we fight by covenant. Oh yes, we are not ignorant about the battle that lies ahead. First of all, Paul opened our eyes to a battle. He said, I have fought the good fight. Just know that there is battle for everyone to fight. That statement is alone is already an explanation that if you are a Christian, there is a battle you must fight. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In other words, there is a race ahead of you brothers and sisters if you want to be victorious the truth there is you must ask Paul how do you finish the race these men are men of covenant never fight a battle without a backup you become a victim yourself fighting battles without covenant makes you a what a victim yourself many of you today your problem started when you decided to fight the idol of your family and yet you don't have a backup suddenly you begin to build a house you say I'm a Christian nobody build there you say I must build I must build the Lord say if you are in Christ I'm a new creature all things pass away and the idol look at you and laugh you say what covenant do you belong to it is not just to declare with the mount alone but let me tell you there is a component that backs everything we do after you build indeed you realize that you've been building for 18 years and yet the structure is not coming up does it take 18 years to build ah no that is to tell you that altar has capacity to stop one the reason why we ask you to write your request so that we can help you some of you don't know that satan himself is an altar God is an altar. Satan is an altar. If you don't subscribe to the altar that is stronger than you, brothers and sisters, the more you fight, the weaker you become. It is possible to be a Christian who does not have an altar. There are many Christians today, brothers and sisters, they are serving God with all their hearts. But they just don't have an altar they realize that they are getting weak because no matter how a soldier is talented he cannot fight a wall alone you don't go to war because you are the smartest you are the best of all soldiers you say because of that i will fight everybody no matter how strong one person is he can't beat everyone here when david finished with goliath the king asked him he said, tell me your altar. What son? What tribe are you from? He said, ah, the son of Jesse. Are you aware that that lineage is where Jesus Christ will come from? And that lineage is unbeatable. Unbeatable. That is why today Jesus is recognized as thou son of who? David. Because they have unbeatable, there is a covenant on that lineage. And anyone who subscribed to that covenant, are you aware that it was David who saved Daniel? 
it was their covenant the covenant of david and solomon that rescued no matter how how close daniel was to jesus to god i mean he could never have been able to shut the mouth of lion when david erect an altar brothers and sisters with his son is there anyone who turned to this temple and pray father remember their sacrifice a time came a decree was published daniel was stressed sometimes the believers can be weary let me ask you when you are tired where do you go for for strength what altar are you connected to when you are stressed and exhausted because even in a battle soldiers can be exhausted where do you go for strength where do you go for renewal where do you go for revival no altar at all and let me tell you don't say i know i belong to the altar of, of a tb joshua you are a joker satan knows it is not by shadow there is always there is always a sacrifice dripping on that altar altars and covenant are not made with the mouth alone our fathers did not put us in problem with their mouth alone they put us in problem by their action yes or no by their actions some of them carry themselves to an idol some of them carry themselves to ungodly places and they made a covenant and said we give you our firstborn we give you our lastborn protect us and from then on generation becomes and be put in problem see now and you now come and say I'm, I'm serving jesus jesus i love you with your mouth with your mouth with that sacrifice dripping on that altar let me tell you you cannot have a covenant don't stand alone in life you'll be so weak and some of you are even in that stage now you are asking god did i do anything wrong you may not necessarily do anything wrong brothers and sisters it could be because you are only operating on the natural and the natural is two percent over hundred it cannot save you for anything i become serious knowing that unless god give you a position you can't have it unless god help you man cannot help themselves so also you too can rely that man of god have been doing this business for 15 years for 10 years for 11 years i know the strategy i'm wondering why this business did not work this time maybe you have done all your work but you refuse to add the anointing could this be the missing link of your life that you are doing your best but only the best on the outside but there is no backup spiritually the bible says in psalm 11 and verse 3 they say if the foundation be destroyed they say what then that the righteous would do the righteous will be the one to suffer first those who are even struggling will be the one to suffer first those who are trying to make it in life will be the one to suffer first never again did i operate on the natural prophet tb joshua say work as if everything depend on you he said pray as if everything depend on god you must combine the supernatural plus your hard work that will give you victory if you don't combine it you'll be surprised it's a band of God, but, but I'm better than this person in my office. Why are they promoting the person? What covenant do you belong to? What covenant? I'm so bad. I know if they are to choose naturally, naturally. Nothing is natural in this world. Brothers and sisters, I tell you, I say nothing is what is natural in this world. Let me show you a scripture. Follow me to Exodus chapter 17 and verse 10. Listen to this battle. He said, so Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with who? Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and whom went up to the top of the hills. The next verse now. 
there's a battle coming up now. They want to fight against the Amalek. Let's watch what happened. The next verse. And so it was. When Moses, take note, Moses is not in the battleground now. Moses is at the, at the temple, at the mountain, on top of the hill. When Moses held up his hand, what happens? That Israel, do what? That Israel, do what? This man is not in a battleground, but this man is an altar, is a covenant. When he raised up his hand, victory is for Israel. Uh -huh. The next scripture now. Okay. Take it back, verse 11. Give us verse 11 again. Verse 11, media. Pay attention to this. It said, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let it, when he let down his hand, Amalek, do what? Is this man in a battleground? Eh? Is he in the battleground? People are fighting by prophets. A spiritual man is interceding for them somewhere. Each time the prophet raises his hand, victory is for his people. And whenever he's tired, he drops it down. That means anytime they ignore the supernatural, they begin to lose. But when they acknowledge the supernatural, they begin to win. When they are tired of the spiritual and they come to the physical, they are losing. Mysteriously. <laughs> Give us that scripture again. The next one, now, verse 12. It said, but Moses' hand become what? Become what? May that never be your portion. It said, Moses' hand become heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and whom supported his hand. Uh -huh, one on one side. And the other on the other side. And his hand were stable until the going down of the what? Until the going down of the sun. Now, next verse now, see what happens. He's not fighting, though. So Joshua defeated the what? Amalek and his people with the edge of what? With the edge of what? It, they did not defeat them by prayer. They defeated by sword, the physical one. Joshua is fighting, but an altar is standing. I thought it was by sword. As a soldier, it's supposed to be by sword, yes or no? But we read that each time Moses at the temple raised his hand, the sword is killing people. So this one, now let me ask you, any time that the, sword, the hand is up, if you try to defeat Joshua, will you be able to defeat him? No matter how talented, if you like, be the best soldier because there is an altar that is speaking for him. That is why you can see people who are not as brilliant as you, who are not as serious as you, yet they are promoting them in their offices. You that is very serious, talented, obedient, yet stagnated, it is not on the physical. There is an altar that is stopping you. And there is an altar that is promoting them. Either good or bad altar. It is not about the activities on the outside. If you go by the activities on the outside, you will lose many times, I tell you. Many times, your life will become a life of experiments. When Moses raised his hand, victory. Raising his hand means when they connect with the covenants. Brothers and sisters, which covenant do you connect to? You see this ministry? This is not a normal church. Have I tell you that many times? This is not a church at all. This is an altar. The altar of the God of Prophet Tibi Joshua is here. And that altar, I tell you, 
is greater than any altar I've seen so far. Don't think Satan is not aware of everything we are doing every day here. Don't be a joker. You think Satan fold his hand to allow you? Satan is not afraid of everyone gathering here. He's afraid of the covenant that backs you up. Why do we do things on the outside and forget the inside? Let me tell you, if you are not connected to an altar or you are not creating your altar by covenant with God, let me tell you, you will be a victim to a, a default altars. If you are not connected to an altar, a living altar, altar that is proved, tested and trusted, if you are not connected, you will be a victim to a default altars. A default altars can be a negative altars. Let me tell you something. David makes a statement, I think in Psalm 23 and from verse 4. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am walking in a valley, but that valley has the shadow of death in it. Are you with me now? I walk in a strange place. I walk in a strange state. I walk in a strange regions. And they have their own climate. Their own climate can be the shadow of death in that, in that place. I cannot be a victim of it because God is with me. You have been reading that scripture many times. But that is what it means. That I am connected to an altar. Now that I enter this valley, he did not tell us the name of the valley. The valley is not his own land. The valley is not his own place. The valley is not his destination. Valley is a strange place. He said, do I walk through the valley? He said, I fear no evil because I know about my altar. I came to that valley with my own atmosphere. So any other atmosphere is going to bow. If you don't have your own atmosphere, you will be a victim to any other atmosphere. What kind of atmosphere follow you anywhere you go? What kind of covenant backs you to your working place? What kind of covenant is with you? And when accidents want to happen, you say, I will not die. Do you think it's by mouth? I will not be poor, but people are still being poor today. That means poverty is not by rejecting it with the mouth or refusing it at all. There is a covenant. You have rejected it many times, but yet it did not work. Because it's not with the mouth. As you are saying, no, 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 I don't want it. Satan said, what are you saying? You are just an actor. Our, our body, physical appearance, activities are slaves to the realm of the spirits. The realm of the spirit have no regard for what is going on on this physical world. They are the mothers, the leaders of whatever happened here. Let me tell you the truth. This is what the herbalists, the shrines, and those people you see, they do to people. You know that they know that if they beg you for money, you will not give them. They go to a strange altars to collect something to talk to you. So that, that their atmosphere will make you to compare you to do what you don't want to do. There is a covenant that can bring favor. There is a covenant that can bring victory. There is a covenant that can bring restoration. There is a covenant that also brings shame and disgrace. It depends on the one you are connected to. And let me tell you the truth. If you are not connected to an altar, maybe your grandfather have even helped you connect yourself. You've heard demon here. Demon says, their father make a covenant with me. That means you don't even have one. Maybe your parents have done one for you. If you read Lamentation chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, our fathers, Lamentation chapter 5, yes. Lamentation chapter 5 and verse 7. It says, our fathers have sinned and they are no more. 
but we bear their iniquities. How do I carry what I don't know about? That means even when your father is late, the covenant is still alive. Today, Prophet T.B. Joshua is no more in the flesh, but the covenant and the legacy still continues. So also imagine it is a negative covenant. So if, even though it's no longer alive, that negative patterns will still continues. The initiators may not be alive. That is why when you say my mother is a witch, let her die. Even when your mother died, tell you the, uh, the altar is still doing fine, very fine. Ready to see suck bloods. The solution is not killing the winch or wizard. The solution is terminating the covenant that backs them up. If you don't subscribe to a higher covenant, there is no advantage for you. Brothers and sisters, we are not just here to talk about covenants. But we are here this morning to make sure that you two get connected to the covenant of the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua. To the covenant of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Moses, the God that can work wonders. Some of you is just a lip service you have been doing to God. Let me show you a scripture in the Bible. It said, Therefore, whoever hear this saying of mine and does them will be like, we will like him to a wise man, Abby, who built his house on the what? On the rock. This man built on the rock and the rain descended. Take notes. The rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew. And beat on the house, and it did not fall. Why? For it was founded on the where? On the where? The next verse. Now give us the next verse. Uh -huh. But anyone who hear this saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the what? On the sand, one built on a rock, one built on a what? On the sand. The next verse now. Mm -hmm. He said, The rain descended. That same thing that happened. The flood came. Did it happen in the first one? And the wind blew and beat on that house and it fell. What happened? Great was it what? Great, great was it fall. It fell mightily. But the question now, is it that the build that was the problem? Is it the building that was the problem? The building is not the problem. But on where it was built on. This one built and they built where? The painting was nice. The raw, the, 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 the iron used to build it was accurate. But there is a challenge. The covenant which they built them on was separate. That means a business can be built on the sand and yet it will not last. A marriage can be built on the sand. Beautiful man and beautiful woman. He said, my wife is the most beautiful one. I love my wife with all my heart. I can't leave her for the rest of my life. I've, I've made a vow. And people who have been in marriage for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, they, they feel sorry for you. You see our parents who are close to their husband and wife, they are praying together. They say, I don't know why these people are like this, but I know I will love my wife. It's not all about physical love here, brothers and sisters. It's not about the physical one. Two years later, you and your wife say, I don't know why I marry you. You say, I don't know why I marry you too. I don't know how I get to you. You don't know how you get to me because it's not by the physical appearance at all. Marriage is not built upon your emotions marriage is not built upon your sympathy marriage is not built upon your appearance you will crash land time and again so also business is not built at all on intelligence man of god is not built on intelligence Man, businessman it is not built on intelligence oh because you are a good orator you are a presenter so you can advertise any product does not make you <laughs> the best at all. Those who teach us about wealth supposed to be the richest today. 
but yet they are not. Because it's not by having the knowledge of it. Are you aware of that? There are many who tell you how to be rich, how to be blessed, how to be this, how to have the Holy Spirit, and yet they don't have it. They teach so much on it. Are you aware that a man of God can be suffering from a negative altar? You can be a man of God, and yet an altar is fighting you. You can be a businessman, a very good businessman, and yet an altar is fighting you. Said both of them built, one built on the sand, and the other built on the rock. He said, but rain came, flood came, and the wind blew. The one that blew to the house on the rock, he has stand balance. So when you envy people who are moving despite all ups and down, and they are still standing, it's not that they are standing by themselves. Paul said, I continue to this day because I was helped by God. I'm standing up to now, not by my own power and might. I stand because there's a backup somewhere who is backing me up. Who backs you up? Who is supporting you? <laughs> my, my uncle is there. My auntie is still there. They told me anything I want at all. Anything I need, I should mention it. The Bible says, woe. Woe to he. Who put his flesh, who put his trust and energy on men. When you begin to trust in the, in the arm of flesh, both God and Satan begin to have sympathy for you. Because they know, both of them know you will crash land. Both of them know you cannot stand at the middle. You can either be for God or in any way you must be connected to one. My question once again is that what altar are you fighting from? What altar are you operating from? Go and ask your occultic people. They never go out but without consulting their altars. But Christians today, they say they are personal Christians. I know my Bible. I have two Bibles at home. One is Amplified. One is NIV. One is King James. It's not all about that, brothers and sisters. There is an altar that backs men. This ministry will continue to grow from glory to glory. Whether you like it or not, it's not by choice. It's by command. Because it's founded on the altar of the God of Prophet C.B. Joshua. So you have no choice. It must grow. Don't make any mistake that when your business is rising, everybody is happy for you. You are too innocent to believe that. If you believe that, it is a proof that you are a child. That as you rise, men clap for you just like that. They say, we are happy for you. As you rise and everybody celebrates with you and hug you. Are you aware for every breakthrough, there is always an enemy? For every testimony, there's always a devil waiting for the next battle. Are you not aware? So therefore, be connected to an altar if you want to be a finisher. May God bless you in Jesus' name.